Hello and welcome to your Saturday edition of Collider Mailbag. I'm Perry, this is Dennis, and I was about to say, at the time you're watching this episode, we're not here, but yeah. technically we are still here, but we're gearing up to go to Star Trek uh, convention in Las Vegas, and yeah, we're, we're basically, if you're watching this right when it goes live, we're hitting the road very, very soon. Yeah, and we're going to be checking out uh, what they got going on there and hopefully interviewing some cool people, especially from Star Trek Discovery, which yeah. you have become a fan of. I am a fan of Discovery. I think I, you know, there's there's a little bit of a difference between people who are longtime fans yeah. and then people who are newcomers to Star Trek that I've noticed the more I've discussed Discovery with, you know, all sorts of fans out there. But uh, yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Um, before we jump into today's questions, I need to remind you, Mailbag also exists in podcast form. We are on the Movie Talk feed. And on top of that, another reminder, four ways to get your questions answered on this show. Send them to the email address, which is mailbag at collider.com. We also have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So keep an eye out for those posts. Put your questions right there. And who knows, maybe we will answer them on next weekend's shows. We're jumping into it with a Facebook question today. And this first question comes from, oh, I hope I say this name <laughs> right, Prince Bajwani, who writes, do you think after 2019, are the studios going to start approaching their big IP differently based on how Comic-Con 2018, there was no big reveal to what to look forward to after 2019? No WBDC, Star Wars, Marvel, Transformers, etc." I think studios in general are going to proceed more cautiously because a lot of people since Avengers was the turning point when when Marvel uh, released Avengers in the theater and it was a big hit every studio decided we want that we want to have because you know they were kind of watching the whole shared universe thing and it was cool but once that movie came out every studio was like okay we want that now marvel has been the only one to actually be successful in, in doing this so you had people like dc who you know they have their shared universe and it's kind of have it had its up, ups and downs but really the actual shared universe part of it like their most successful one was wonder woman mm -hmm. and that one you know had like very loose connections to the actual shared universe and so i think they realized okay we're gonna back off this thing it's still gonna be connected but we're gonna focus more on what the movies are about and you know you had uh uh who was it a universal with their, their dark universe with a mummy i knew that was gonna come yeah <laughs> like they they're planning like we're gonna have this big franchise and so i think studios now are gonna proceed more cautiously because they're gonna say okay are we gonna invest all this money and time into something that if we don't do it right and if we announce too far ahead of time that we're gonna kind of almost i don't know if it's jinxing themselves or something but like it's like they kind of want to take it up more carefully i mean you know i it's sorry to bring up a sore subject perry but yeah, i always mention <laughs> power rangers uh the uh i forgot who it was it was it under legendary at the time um lionsgate 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 and, and i remember the ceo was talking about and we'll make our sixth movie or seventh movie and this is before the first one even came out i was like oh hold your horses if you watch like an old i think episode of movie talk i i was like calm down let, let's get the first movie out and make it. So I think studios have now taken a, a more cautious approach. And I think, it, I think it's better because not everyone can do what Marvel's doing. I mean, that's a unique situation. And I think they, uh, 
studios, you know, for financial reasons should slow, slow down. One bright side to things not working out for Power Rangers is they just recently auctioned off all the props and costumes from the movie because they're not going to make a second one, I suspect, with that exact uh, timeline yeah. there. And I am the proud owner of a Power Coin. So, nice. yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good get. I'm not telling you how much I spent <laughs> on it. But I will say when you compare all the Power Coins sold, I feel like I played the auction game very smartly because I think I got uh, one at the most reasonable cost. So I'm patting myself on the back for that. Plus, it's something that that's going to make me happy to look yeah. at. But, you know, Power Rangers is a very fair example when answering a question like this, because I'm most focused on him mentioning Comic-Con 2018, because most Comic-Cons, I mean, especially when you think about one of the one of the most recent Comic-Cons where Warner Brothers in D.C. in particular unveiled this epic slate that mm -hmm. almost didn't really come to fruition at all. And, you know, it goes back to the Power Rangers thing. So I think if studios are learning anything about their IPs and their major franchises and their cinematic universe hopes right now, I am really hopeful it's that you don't put the cart before yes. the horse and announce a bajillion things that people wind up getting disappointed about when they don't actually happen. Because when you do stuff like that, you set a certain expectation and then you almost set yourself up to fail too because you know these movies are insanely expensive there's so many moving parts and there's tons of great movies out there but it's really hard to make a good one and sometimes when you announce things like that and you don't make do one let's say a release date that is a year away if you miss that release date all of a sudden you start to change the tone of the conversation around that movie and maybe there's this negativity about it that isn't warranted so better off just taking it step by step and announcing things when you're really ready yeah, I mean, Justice League was a great example of that. That was something that was announced a long time ago. We knew it was coming. It was hyped up. But then they had problems that I think could have they could have benefited from more time to do it, but they mm -hmm. rushed it out there instead of like, hey, maybe we should reshoot some more or scrap certain things. Yeah. They just kind of cobbled it together, and then when it released, it kind of released, yeah, you know, it's just, with a it's whimper. just setting unreal expectations. I mean, going back to uh, Dark Universe, I wish they had just started with a good mummy movie mm -hmm. because the second they announced the Dark Universe, and especially, you know, the stuff with Russell Crowe felt so shoehorned in, and when I was watching that movie, even though I was liking some of the stuff mm -hmm. that, that specifically pertained to the mummy, once all of the the stuff with Russell Crowe's character came in, and uh, now I'm forgetting the name of the uh, Doctor Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde. No, 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 yeah. not the character name. The starts with starts with a with a P. The you know the big facility, the group that he's part of. Oh, I. Oh, I it's gonna bother me now. Yeah, but anyway, that once that came mind. into the movie, all I kept thinking of was how it took me out of the movie, and then I was watching this as a cinematic universe that is essentially crashing and burning. Prodigium is that what it was I, called? I think that is what it's you're called. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> all right, you want to move on to question yes. number two. And the second question comes from email, and Chris writes. No one I know is excited about Venom. Is the whole Sony Spider-Man thing with no Spider-Man Doom before it even starts? All right, this question stresses me out a little, but I, I think it's a fair question to be an asking right now. Personally, I will not judge Venom super hardcore until I see it for myself. I'm still eager to see it. I'm curious to see how it all turned out, but I think that it would also be it would also be kind of stupid to ignore nor the signs that we're seeing and hearing right now, whether it's, you know, people that know a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes or just uh, getting the temperature of the room, so to speak, with fans of the source material who are not really feeling the footage that they saw thus far. And, you know, I'm in the minority with that last trailer. I don't think it was a great trailer, but I certainly didn't think it was this this big trash fire like a lot of people mm -hmm. made it out to be. I thought it was okay. Okay, and I'm still just as excited as I was before to see what Tom Hardy is going to do in that role. But there's definitely a, uh, a pretty uh, potent uh, air of negativity around Venom right now. And not even just when it comes to the quality of the movie either, but you also have to consider box office potential with something like this. And I just think that Venom is, is kind of going to be caught in the middle between 
being a superhero movie, so to speak, that makes a lot of money, but also being right smack in the middle of a good deal of competition. The weekend it opens, I think it's only going up against A Star is Born, which who knows, if that one really pops at the festivals, that could get a lot of attention. But the weekend before, it's Hellfest, Night School, Small Foot. The weekend after, it's Bad Times at the El Royale, Royale First Man, Goosebumps 2. The weekend after, it's Halloween. It's just a very, very busy end of September into October. And if that movie doesn't make enough money to warrant a franchise and also disappoints fans, Sony could be kind of dead in the water. Yeah, I think Venom is an uphill battle in, in terms of marketing. One, they don't seem to be marketing. One, we don't know for sure if there's going to be you know the Spider-Man connection or not. And if there is, they're definitely not marketing as such. And so it doesn't look like it's part of a bigger universe so people who are like in love or connected with the MCU mm -hmm. they're, they're not going to rush out to see this uh, also Venom is an interesting character look he's a very popular character especially for comic book fans and yes casual people know him but he's not like this iconic like if i tell my mom she knows who spider-man is she knows yeah, who yeah. superman is batman etc she has no idea who venom is you know venom is not you know it's it, it's definitely he's definitely popular and people know him but and he's also he was supposed to be a villain in, in spider-man he was he set out as a villain, but because he became so popular, they made him into an anti-hero, and that's probably what they're doing with this movie as well. I'm interested because it's a Tom Hardy. I like the Venom character, but then uh, is it is it Ruben Fleischer directing this one? Yeah. Yeah. His last movie that I saw wasn't a fan of, which was uh, Gangster Squad. Oh, boy. Yeah. I did like Zombieland. You know what I mean? So th there's a lot of, like, hesitation going into this movie. It's just it's a hard movie to market, and then it's it's like this... Should this thing be like more darker and then, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just something that I, I feel like they have a lot of challenges with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it kind of goes back to our answers on that first question, too. I mean, they're not, you know, they didn't go out and deliberately announce a gigantic slate, but we've already been talking about, uh, you know, Mysterio, which I guess isn't really going to happen. Craven the Hunter was the hot news this week because they got a writer. There was Silver and Black, which started and stopped and will hopefully get going again. But, you know, whenever you have that that kind of outside action mm -hmm. happening, it influences what you're thinking of the first movie before you go into it. And I think between the negativity around the last Venom trailer, plus the news of the Craven the Hunter movie getting a writer, mm -hmm. I, I think th that's kind of what sparked a, a whole lot of trepidation in me, more so than I've felt before regarding Sony's Sp Spider-Man cinematic universe that doesn't include Spider-Man. I don't yeah. even know what to call it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how the rights are in... in are they, they should be allowed to show Spider-Man in there because the, the Spider-Man movies are, what, a co-production between them and Marvel. I'm sure somewhere in the contract it's like, we can have Spider-Man in there but i guess maybe they have to talk to marvel yeah about, they're uh, that's going to be a very difficult thing because i i also really do believe that marvel is not going to let something that they don't have creative control over get one of their most popular characters or influence the mcu as we know it and you know, in regards to Spider-Man maybe popping up in Venom, I still don't think it's going to happen. But if it happens, I think it's only going to be as much as maybe seeing Spider-Man in a headline of a newspaper or on a news report, something mm -hmm. like that. I don't think we're going to see Tom Holland pop up for a quick scene or something. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh? All right. Ready All right. for question number yeah. three? All right. This one is a Twitter question, and it comes from Artie. Artie, why did I give myself all the difficult names? I'm sorry, Artie. Artie Dul Dulat Ahi? Oh, that was bad. Who writes, I just read that Detective Pikachu has now changed its distributor from Universal to Warner Brothers, but they stated that the release date will remain the same, which is May 10th, 2019. Will it affect it in any way, shape, or form, or the studio change? Doesn't matter. When it comes to the actual movie itself that you watch, no, it's not going to affect mm -hmm. it. It's just the distributor and, you know, they handle the marketing. So that's what's going to change is the marketing aspect of the film is going to change. And, you know, you just have to think, okay, Universal to Warner Brothers. What is Warner Brothers? You know, because this is going to be a younger audience. Warner Brothers did uh, the Harry Potter movies. And, the, you know, like, I think I take some of that experience. In mar I, I don't know because mm -hmm. I personally don't know much about Pokemon. And so I don't know how... the 
what the audience is for that, and I don't know how they're going to handle that, but the marketing aspect is what's going to change, not the movie itself. Yeah, uh, Legendary is still the one making the movie, and I think more so than anything, this is a sign of uh, shifting shifting packs, arrangements between mm. studios, because what is it? They're, right now, they're with Universal, and I think that deal comes to an end. I had jotted a note down, and I can't... Oh, so their, their distribution pack ends in December, mm -hmm. so perhaps this is a sign that we're going to see Legendary realign themselves with Warner Brothers, and I, I think that's the biggest deal here. There's really, when it comes to distributor, I'm not all that surprised that they kept the release date, as long as from a production standpoint, they're still on track to be doing what they were doing before. And, you know, given some of the recent news with casting and stuff, mm -hmm. it does seem like they're well underway. So the release date doesn't surprise me, but if anything, I think we're gonna see a future where the Universal Pact ends and the Warner Brothers one begins. Yeah. All right, wanna move to the next one? Yeah, we have from Twitter, uh, GearBear36 writes, Hollywood seems to only remake good movies, Ghostbusters, Scarface. I, I, re, I wish they would remake bad movies that deserve a second chance. Aragon was a great book series, but the movie was garbage. What bad movies should be remade? I think about this all the time, all the time. <laughs> so first examples that came to mind because uh, Gare Bear here referenced a book is, you know, when Hunger Games came out, that wound up being my beat a little for some of the outlets that I was uh, working with because I was the only one who had read Hunger mm -hmm. Games. And then I started to read a whole bunch of young adult properties, thankfully, because that's what Hollywood essentially went nuts over after. So first, my mind goes to the Divergent franchise, mm -hmm. which makes me sad, but it doesn't even really apply because I think the first Divergent movie is good. And then with the other ones, they just, I mean, tanked so hard. I can't believe how bad Allegiant is. That is a, that is a really bad movie. Is that movie. the second one? Or That's third? the third one. Okay, I, I didn't even get that far. In, uh, Insurgent isn't good either, but Allegiant is, is atrocious. I didn't like any of them, uh, <laughs> so I can't agree with you there. I didn't like the first one. I thought the second one was even worse. Like put, I, 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 got, I got to see it for free, and I was just falling asleep. It was so boring. I don't, need to see, I, don't, I don't need to see those. Uh, maybe, maybe the books are much better. I don't know because I haven't read the books. I don't need to see it. The, the books are better. Okay. Um, same thing with The Fifth Wave, that movie with Chloe Moretz mm. that came out. I also really like that director. I was sad that didn't pan out. But the book has some good stuff that I think they just missed the mark with. Um, also, The Circle. The Circle mm. came out. That's a great book. And the adaptation wasn't very good. But moving away from books a little, there's so many things that just because they had a bad movie, I don't want to see the concept go away. And probably one of the top on my list for that is Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was pretty disappointed in Suicide Squad the movie, but I love the idea of those characters coming together, and I, I wish I just wish they would give it another shot at some point. I don't know if that makes any sense given the current state of the DCEU, but that would be at the top of my list. And another one is In Time, because I thought that was a brilliant concept that essentially went nowhere. Which one, which the, one was that it was one? the one with Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried. Oh, I believe it's it when good, people good stop, yeah. they stop aging at, uh, I think the age is 25, mm -hmm. and they treat time as currency. And it was just such a great idea, and I think it started out okay and then kind of fizzled out. But... You know, I've got a whole long list of things. I, I want to see a new Congo movie. Mm -hmm. I think if they may, I still love the original Congo, but when you rewatch it now and if I introduce it to anyone, and I know Congo is a bad rap too, but I think they should remake Congo. But one of the ones that I think is so ripe for remake, especially right now, is freaking Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch could have been great. Sucker Punch. It's great the, visually. Look cool. The beginning, the opening sequence mm -hmm. is so so good, but then the characters are nothing more than surface level treatments yes. of of these people, and I, I was just so grossly disappointed in that movie, oh, and wouldn't it, mind it, seeing a movie it with a little depth. Comic Con the year before, and everyone was going nuts over it. Really? Yeah, like uh, in, not the whole like movie. Like the, fo the footage. The footage. Well, that's the what they that's what they did with Watchmen with uh, Zack Snyder too. I remember uh, one of one of the most impressionable Comic-Con panels for me was New York in I think 2009 when they showed off the opening title sequence of Watchmen and I'm like this movie's going to change mm -hmm. my life and I wound up liking it but not I, as much yeah, as I like the Watchmen opening. is a far superior movie than <laughs> that it to is. Sucker that it is. Sucker Punch. Uh, for me, uh, sorry Rogue Transformers movies, those need to be remade. Those are bad. 
looks like that may be happening. I think this Bumblebee movie looks pretty good yeah. so far. I like Travis Knight. I like what he did with Kuba and Two Strings. So I'm hopeful for that. Uh, and, you know, they, they haven't announced the next Transformers because the, the last one actually took a dip in, in financials. Even though the movies never were that great, at least Paramount could say, okay, we're making tons of money, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. The last one dipped by a significant amount. So they should remake all of those. Uh, the other one that I always will say is uh, M. Night's The Last Airbender. That is a terrible movie. It is a stain on cinema. I The funny thing about that movie is I watched it. It's one of my greatest uh, uh, film-going exper theater experiences because the whole theater turns on the movie like about one-third the way through, and then people are just shouting yeah. stuff out, laughing, blah, blah, blah. The good thing, though, was after that movie... I went to go watch the animated series, which was fantastic, mm -hmm. just based on like, okay, now I know about this property. I saw a lot of hardcore fans there watching it, and they look traumatized after seeing that film. Um, but I watched it. It's excellent. That should be redone. That should be remade. Uh, and M. Night is like, I like Split. Uh, looks like Glass looks really cool. I like yeah. the trailer for Glass. So, you know, looks like he's on a comeback but I, but, but that, that. that that period of time was yeah the happening oh, lady in the water and and uh, <laughs> uh this uh, crap uh, bag uh last airbender yeah 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 so. but he's coming back yeah i, yeah, that, I don't think a, there's there's any chance anyone would ever hand the reins back over to him but no it seems it seems like it is a shame to kind of uh put a stop to that that idea on the big screen just because that first movie uh yeah. didn't do too well and wasn't very good. All right, we have one more question today, and I okay. think this is the question that the two of us were looking forward to yes. most. All right, it's an email from Joseph Ashley, and he writes, Hi Collider, take exchange off limits. If you could take any item off anybody's desk from the Collider staff without getting caught, or you can exchange it for it, and what's off limits. So take exchange off limits. What, what, do, you, uh, what do you put in each of those categories? Okay. Uh I don't know about the trade stuff. And look, looking at people's desks, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan. I mean, I like Harry Potter, but I'm just not like, like when we do, when uh, we do like the, the inner geekdom schmodowns and they do the questions, like anytime like Harry Potter comes up, I know like nothing. Even though I've seen all the movies and I enjoyed them, I just have no retention of it whatsoever. However, both Roko and Riley have really cool Harry Potter wands yeah. on their desks. They look really cool and expensive and detailed so those were maybe the things that i would kind of you know take in the in the middle of the night from 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 their desks um i don't know if i would exchange anything for them but if suddenly you know the next morning they they came and they were gone like they might be <laughs> like in my office um uh as far as my stuff that are off limits uh i brought them here today i've got uh <laughs> just to make sure nobody took them while we were recording yes, ex ex exactly i have uh, this is a flask my friend avatar gave me for my birthday it's an iron throne it's game of thrones she knows very I very appropriate game of thrones, so this is cool so i always you know because a, a lot of the other stuff you can always like replace i have this cool uh Disaster artist blu-ray that tommy was signed when he was yeah, yeah. in here that was pretty cool uh when we went to comic book shopping uh, with Frank Miller, who is a legend in the comic book industry. I had him sign this uh, Dark Knight comic book here. So that is also off limits. Okay. It's a re then, reasonable off limits list. And then finally, I have this Nuka Cola, which is from everyone knows I love Fallout, and Nuka Cola is one of those kind of uh, important things in Fallout. This actually was uh, given to me uh, from John Schnapp. And he, he had it like made, like he had like a friend who made these really? certain things. He knew that I like, Schnepp liked Fallout as well. And it was something we talked about as, and he, he got this, you know, for our birthday. It's pretty cool. Like there's a, I don't know if you can see here, but there's like Nuka Cola yeah. here. It's really, really cool. That so is the, cool. So these are off limits. Nobody can touch these <laughs> things. All right, all right. So you actually took my take, okay. if that makes sense. But but the thing is, I wouldn't just take their wands okay. because 
I you, would, you, would, I love, you would leave something in exchange for No, them? no, no. I, it's just part of the reason why I like those wands so much is because they were personalized. They were made specifically for them. So if yeah. I could take the ability for whoever made it for them to make me one, I would want that. But I wouldn't want the wand that was made specifically oh, for I'd them. I'd just scratch I just, out their name. <laughs> I'd just like, uh, it's too and Riley. Scribble your own. <laughs> Dennis. Roca. Uh. <laughs> Dennis. I could see this happening, yeah. but I, I really do want one of those wands. Um, you've got a nice pop collection that I would sort through, but when it comes to exchanging, I thought like trading pop for pop yeah. would be an even trade. But the thing is, these are these are uh, two of the pops I have on my. I actually don't have as many in the office anymore. A lot of them are back home, mm. but of the pops that I have. I don't think I would trade them for anybody else's. I, I, I've got my, my Pennywise, my Ian Malcolm, mm. I have my Porg, a Demogorgon, and I also have my Groot, and those are mine. No one's taking those, I wouldn't want that. And with Off Limits, with Off Limits, I mean, it's mostly the, the personal irreplaceable yes. things. So I have, uh, speaking of things that were signed, I have this really cool framed uh, case of Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 1 where I have a box quote on it and the whole cast signed it for nice. me. So that is quite precious. I would say my uh, my Bruce Campbell uh, a hot toy. You know that yeah, really? Yeah, I saw that. Do you know what someone did to it? Uh, probably broke it because there's been a lot of things that I've, I've brought here to the studio that were used on set that were broken. I am so upset. Whoever touched that thing last knocked it over and the damn chainsaw hand is broken yeah. off. What is Ash without his chainsaw hand? I'm so upset. I'm really mad at that. But the other thing that's off limits from just a practical uh, perspective is if anyone takes my standing desk, I would be very unhappy. <laughs> You know what I would take from your desk is, what are those called, the mini mates or what, what are the ones? Uh, the that, dorbs. The, no, 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 no. The oh, the vinyl mation. Yeah, the vinyl Okay, okay. Those are those are cool. That's a good one to want to I you know take probably, or exchange. Yeah, I'd probably take your collection. Oh. So, so if you see them missing, it's, pro <laughs> it's, also, it's probably me. Uh, I've I've got a pretty enormous collection of vinyl mation at home too. So yeah. you know I'm covered with some backups, but the the Avengers vinyl mation are the ones in the office. So if Dennis takes them. Yeah. I'll just, I'll go in and I'll take your, your big tub of mystery minis. Yeah. He is like this gigantic, I mean, like a box like this big. Nobody on the podcast can see how big that box is, yeah. but it's a huge, huge box filled with like, what, what is in there? A hundred mystery minis, Probably. if not more? Probably. Okay. I have a ton. It's, it's My office is smaller than it used to be once we moved here. And so, like, I can't put them everywhere. It's all, also, if you put them somewhere and, let's say, knock wherever they are put, they all fall down. Yeah. And it's the yeah. worst thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, we have too much stuff. Yeah. Stuff problems, I guess. I don't know. All right. That's it. That's all we've got time for today. Dennis, as always, thank you for being here with me. It's a good show. Good questions. Thanks to you guys. As always, don't forget to like and share this episode of Collider Mailbag. And also remind your friends, your family, whoever likes talking about movies and fun stuff, that we have a podcast as well. So go check that out. That's it. We're done. We're going to Vegas now. We will, but I will still see you soon. Actually, tomorrow morning yeah. with Riley, 9 a.m. for your Sunday edition of Collider Mailbag. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.